Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another week of the Capes and Lunatics. This time, we have a huge guest who had a huge week this week. All right, everyone. Miss Annie Chang from Peacemaker. How are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? Oh, very good. Very good. All right. So before we get into all the spoilers and everything, I kind of want to start to go back to the beginning and start. Um, when did you first get involved with the show? Like, when did you find out you got the part? Because I believe they announced the show, I think, before the Suicide Squad movie even came out, correct? Yeah, I I got an audition for it. Um maybe i think uh, like october ish or i can't i honestly can't remember but i feel like it was sometime around the second half of um 2020 yeah and at oh, that wow. time you know i know time is weird right now but <laughs> um, <laughs> uh you know covid had already hit so like you weren't auditioning in person at all so it's been very weird for actors you just like film yourself and send it away and you don't know if anyone watches it you don't know what happens so um so i i had auditioned it just came across i didn't know anything really about it um it just they were very under wraps about what it was about so all i knew it was james gunn and i was like well that's all i need to know i'm interested um so i sent in a tape they gave me some additional scenes i sent in another one as a callback um and then spoiler alert they gave me the note they were like you're an alien and i was like oh okay that's that was different than what i thought <laughs> and then i had a, a <laughs> call back with him like you know and the team over zoom and then i found out like i think within the week that i had gotten it and then i was just getting ready to go to vancouver so it was this weird thing where it's like i hadn't really formally in person met anyone beforehand you know which is crazy and wild but also amazing that you can do that now <laughs> so that was gonna be my big that was gonna be another big question so you knew prior to even shooting anything that this what happened in episode six was gonna happen no i had oh, no idea okay. i because they wouldn't even give us the full scripts they only gave us a few scenes that we were auditioning with so all i knew was that i was a detective that's all i knew and then when they wanted to call me back for it they gave me something from a later episode that is not out yet um and they were like but they were like you know by the way you're an alien and i was like what does that mean but then they were like actually during the callback he was like just kidding you're not just be a person and i was like oh okay he was like basically butterflies are gonna fly in your brain but just don't worry about it i was like okay cool <laughs> um so so yeah i had no idea i had no idea where it was going it wasn't until after i got the part and I got all the scripts that I was like, whoa, which was a nice surprise. Like, are you a fan of any of the comics or any of the movies or anything like that? I have to be honest. I I mean, I loved James's Suicide Squad. Um, you know, I'm a fan of James, Guardians of the Galaxy. But I, I honestly, before this and even now, have never been super... Um, uh, a huge comic person. When I think about growing up, like... I don't even know if this counts, but I had like I had Archie comics. That, <laughs> that was what I loved. It counts. Okay, great. I had a lot of Archie comics. Did you ever? I don't know if you ever used to read them, but in the middle they would have like photos of fans with all their comics. You know, I wanted so badly to be in it. I would like ask my mom to take pictures of me with all my comic books. But I loved Archie, um, which is funny because Lachlan, who plays Fitzgibbon, is on Riverdale, so it kind of came full circle. But um. But no, this world is not something that I knew anything about. I had never done any superhero stuff. So it's been a really nice change. And I feel like I have a lot of catching up to do. All right. And before, again, before episode six, the big question I, I wanted to ask you for a while now. Okay. That opening intro dance scene. Is that as fun to shoot as it looks or after like the 50th take? Are you just like, oh, again? No, it's so fun. I think every time somebody was laughing and cracking up, uh, especially because a lot of people weren't doing the moves right. And we would start being like, you didn't do it on the right count. <laughs> um, it was extremely fun and silly. And at that point, you know, a lot of us hadn't even quite worked together yet. So when we actually shot it, it was such a nice day for everybody to come together and, and do that together. So it was, it absolutely was. And I'm amazed that they got takes of nobody laughing 
<laughs> that you know of. That I know of. It's probably just hiding, yeah, in the back. Uh, okay. Okay, so I think we I think you uh, I think we already spoiled it, but okay, everyone, spoilers from here on out for episode six. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so no, no, that's fine. That's fine. No, uh, so yes, we're a spoiler podcast. Okay, well, great. Um, but yeah, uh, well, Charlie and I were just talking while we were waiting for you and Lilith. Uh, we were saying, you know, we're both kind of sad that we lost uh, Detective uh, Sophie Song this time. I mean, I think for you it's great because you get to play two different characters, but it's like, yeah, I mean, we were really liking. Uh, Sophie and all, you know, now she's gone for good, right? Yeah, I mean, well, you know how okay. you never yeah, know yeah. things for good or not for good, right? Um, even when you're sure that they're gone, you're like, wait, what? So, uh, I yeah, on one hand, I was like, oh, I love, I love Sophie. She's such a, she's like such a badass in her own way. You know, she could easily leave Augie in prison and she helps oh, yeah. him out, even though he sucks. You know, so I just think there's something about her that's really cool that that she really does what's right outside of what she thinks or how she feels about something, you know, which I think is pretty cool. Um, uh, but yeah, as an actor, I was like, oh, you want me to turn into the bad guy? Look, I got to say, I never thought anyone would ever pay me to be a villain. <laughs> so I was like, sign me up. Um, uh, it was very fun. I mean, like I said, we I I hate miss you know losing the character, but it's great for you because again, I think Sophie was like the most moral person on this show because I mean, even the you know this racist for how many episodes who basically you know said the nastiest things and now she's like oh well he's not guilty so you know got to get him out of jail even though you know no one would have blinked an eye if she just would have left him there. So basically, you go for the most from the most moral character on this show to uh, what the big bad. So <laughs> that's yeah. A nice, uh, Little yeah, range. it reminded me of Phil. I was like, no, not her friend Merkel, please. Anything but her friend <laughs> Merkel. <laughs> I know. It broke my heart, but it was interesting. So <laughs> I know. It's uh it, I I didn't think of it that way, but I guess you're right, because even like, you know, like Adebayo is a good person, but you know, she does plant the diary, diary yeah. and she's kind of, you know, um, yeah, I, she, and not even like it, it wasn't easy, you know, she had to go through all this, Sophie has to go through all this effort to get this like total, just horrid person out. Yeah, I guess you're right. It is, it, it is sad to sort of lose that. But I do think what James does so well in the show is like, even the people that aren't great, you end up caring for them, you know, like, Peacemaker is like not a very good guy and neither is Vigilante, but you, I love them when I watch it and I root for them. And I'm like, why am I rooting for you? You're terrible. But, but I think that's what James does really well, which I love. Yeah. I often uh, describe uh, Peacemaker as sort of um, the uh, ultra violent version of uh, Chance Gardner from being there. Um I don't know if you're familiar with that film, but uh, uh, being there, it's uh, about a, <clears throat> sort of a dim-witted person who sort of falls up into the higher echelons of society. And um, <laughs> that, that's sort of how, the, how I see the, the Peacemaker character. Although I have to say that, you know, John Cena has actually delivered very well and shown a lot of uh, subtlety in his performance as well. By yeah. the way, I do want to let you know that Lilith is actually uh, a very huge Archie fan. Yes, um is. I know. <laughs> so, so you guys have an immediate connection there. We'll have lots to talk about. <laughs> I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to see all the Sophie song cosplayers because I, when I was online, I think it was on Twitter. I saw. I don't know if there's some website where like they're like, oh, here's a link where you can buy the uh, coat that Annie wore on the show, and I'm just like, oh my god, are people going to be cause? You know, people are going to be at conventions wearing that coat with blood on half of their face. <laughs> so. You know, um. I can only hope it would be so fun. <laughs> I did see on Twitter you said, uh, "Yeah, don't taste that fake blood; it tastes bad." So what's what is oh, that? Oh, it's not just corn syrup anymore. No, I, I mean, it's it's a mix of I don't know what, but it is very thick, like corn syrup, you know, because it has it can't just look like water or whatever. Um, but yeah, it is it is sweet. But I know that they were like mixing some stuff, so I don't know what's in it completely, but. It's really gross when it's so thick and it was it was like hot that day. And then, you know, I would just lie on the ground and they would pour it in my mouth. And they were like, now 
cough it up as hard as you can. <laughs> and I was like, this is weird. And there are moments where I felt like I was actually choking because it's just me trying to, to cough it up, you know? So yeah, it's pretty gross. And, and you're nervous because you're like, if I don't make it look good on this first take, we're going to have to wipe everything and change everything and fix my makeup and do it again, you know? Um, but yeah, I feel like I was just tasting a weird corn syrupy mixture for, for weeks. <laughs> No, you did a great job because I felt bad. I was like, "Oh God, she's dying, and she's not dying like peacefully." You know, it, it's it's Nobody it's like, dies rough. peacefully on this. Show. Oh no, no! <laughs> Don't let the doves fool you, Phil. <laughs> I know, but at least some people go quick. You know. So I do want to ask you this because, as as I said, uh, Phil and I were both bonding over how much we loved uh, Detective Song. Um, I liked her wittiness. I liked the way that she plays with Augie while they're. Well, they're in there, and especially in the fact that no matter how much he wants to be just a complete jerk, she is already sort of one step ahead of him and is effectively showing that, you know, your insults aren't very good, and <laughs> I can I can roast you better than you can roast me. And it, it, it always gets me wondering in a show like this, because, you know, I mean, it is, you know, it is James Gunn. Um, how much of that are you just, you know, you get the script and you read it and you're just that good at delivering it like it's just natural? And how much of it is just on the fly? You do like 20 takes and you call them six different white guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is 100% James's writing. He's so funny. And and nice. over the course of between when I auditioned and when I actually ended up shooting it, he had changed the names. Like, I think he had gone through many names as far as what would be funniest. Um uh, so no, that's, that's definitely all him. Um, which is interesting because many people on this, uh, you know, in the cast are so funny. Like John can just, you know, that scene where he just keeps naming people <laughs> and it just goes on forever. Like, like John could do that with no script though. He really could just fire away a bunch of people like that and, and it would work. But I think that, I think James even like tweeted something about how like maybe like one or two percent of the dialogue in the whole show is improvised, but the rest of it is all it's really his genius. Um, uh, I can see little bits that he kept in sometimes, um, uh, but it's definitely him. I think he also just wrote it in a way that's so easy to come out of your mouth as an actor. You know, it's not it just sounds exactly like how you would talk. So. It's all him. <laughs> so how much time did you get to spend with your partner? Did you guys like, uh, I don't know, like work out some stuff before you even got to the, you know, behind the, you know, in front of the camera and just working? Yeah. I, I think that the first time that I even met Lachlan playing Fitzgibbon, I think I, the first time I met him was the day that we shot the scene where we go, pay Augie a visit and I call him a fork. <laughs> um, and I remembered feeling slightly nervous because A, I was like, oh my God, it's Robert Patrick, right? But then B, also I was like, we should already have a rapport and a chemistry and I've never I've never met Lachlan. I hope I like him, you know? The worst thing is when you get stuck on a show and you're like, Ugh, I don't like this person that I'm always acting with. And the nice thing is that the moment I met Lachlan, he was clearly so warm and so kind. He's the kind of guy where he would show up on set and then everybody would be smiling. Like he just makes everyone feel good and happy and, um, and everyone likes to make fun of him and he teases them back, you know? So the rapport I think felt very easy immediately from the beginning, just cause he's a great guy. Um, more so I, I was like, you know, I don't think Sophie is afraid of Augie, but I was like, but Annie is very intimidated by Robert Patrick. <laughs> I was like, well, Annie needs to pretend that she is not intimidated because <laughs> um, he has so much presence. He's a cool guy too, but he, you know, you can just, you can see it in the performance. His energy is like so intense that I was like, ah, I'm scared. I have to act not scared. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, we didn't meet until that first day, which is kind of crazy, but it all worked out. And I guess, uh, I guess Sophie had affection for him. Is that what uh, Goff said? Uh, yeah, you know, 
I think Lachlan asked me at some point, he was like, do they have a thing? Like, the Sophie? <laughs> and I was like, in your dreams. <laughs> but I, <laughs> but I, I was like, what do you mean like a thing? He was like, I don't know. Just like, is there, you know, and I was kind of like, I don't think there was like, I think affection as in like, they were partners for like a, a long time. You, tr you really trust them. They, they literally have to have your back and protect you, you know, and vice versa. So I think there's a really special bond that they have. Um, I don't think there was any attraction, but you'll have to ask Fitzgibbon. I don't know if he's harboring any sort of secret cr crushes here or there. But, but on Sophie's side. for a little Benson and Stabler sexual tension. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, you know, they... Um, yeah, I just think that they were really close. I, that scene where, where Sophie's you know, turning into a butterfly and he's like cradling her. I, I remember when we were shooting it, I was like, oh, I feel like really Lachlan too. He was like, I feel really sad. Like I, and I was like, yeah, it, it is, you know, um, they do have a special bond. They're like, I think they're just really, really close in a, in a way that's different than friendship, but maybe not in my mind, not totally romantic. Oh yeah, I like the the uh, interplay bet between the two of you. Like Lil said, I would like to see a spinoff, do a prequel, HBO Max. Like, give me a police procedural with those two. Come on. <laughs> I would also Maybe love. She you started know. off in Gotham PD. Who knows? Who knows? I'm oh, there. there. Oh yeah. Throw it out there. They have a Gotham. Right. Coming up. HBO, you listening? There are great ideas happening here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, I did want to ask you one question. Um, now, this is not your first uh, cop. Uh, you did play Molly Chen on Shades of Blue. And how would you compare the two characters? You um, know, I, yeah. No, no, no. Please finish. I didn't mean to know. Well, I mean, they strike me as very different characters. You know, one is, you know, fresh out of Quantico and, you know, sort of the star pupil. And, you know, obviously, you know, um, Detective song is just I, I I feel walks into it already over it. Um <laughs> you know, but like how, how did how did it strike you as an actress? Um just thinking back as you know, as you look at how you've played certain kind of characters in the past, and how do you feel like the evolution of one leads to the other? Yeah, it's funny because they both are obviously in law enforcement, but I find them to be vastly different. And I think that maybe if Molly from Shades of Blue, just like you said, you know, she was fresh out of, she's trying to prove herself. She's like a little unsure, you know, she feels kind of like not the experienced one. And I think maybe if you gave Molly like 10 years, <laughs> she might turn into Sophie, you know, cause she's like over it and nothing's working and the system is broken and I have to do everything around here. So in a way, I just think like, yeah, maybe if you gave her 10 years on the job, but I, I found them just to be super, super different. And then, you know, character aside, just as an actor, I didn't have any um, like real training for shades of blue. Um, I didn't have to shoot a gun or do a lot of that. So it just wasn't totally necessary. Whereas for this part, I had a good amount of training, not only with firearms, but, uh, you know, for safety, but also just like, how do you clear a room and how would you approach a staircase if you're chasing someone? And so I think that there were just, it's funny, Annie is more experienced because I'm older and got to do, uh, you know, uh, this training. And also just, you can tell in Sophie that she is just an experienced um, uh, detective. She's been doing this for a long time, you know? So it's kind of nice that I think that I've had that growth, that sort of like I as a person am matching <laughs> the journeys of these people, um, which is fun. Um, but other than the fact that they're both in law enforcement, I think they're wildly different people. Yeah. And now you get to go very different. I mean, now you're queen of the butterflies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's uh, how many shows do you get where you get to switch you know being who you are halfway through so it's pretty exciting like i said comp almost complete opposite uh so i you probably can't spoil this but i was gonna say now that you now that the alien's in there now that you're a lot stronger are we gonna get a fight scene between you and john cena are you gonna throw him around the room um you'll have to stay tuned what i can say is that 
there was a very funny moment on set where I don't think this really gives too much away where I have my hand on him and they said, they were like, Annie, can you, can you put your hand like around his neck? And I did it. <laughs> and they were like, no, no, around his neck. And I was like, oh, I am. I think you have forgotten that I am five, four on a good day. <laughs> and John Cena's neck is larger I was like, I, and he was like, yeah, she, she is. It just might not look like it. <laughs> um, uh, so it was very, very funny. Um, but you know what? Like there's nobody better to, to do any sort of physical stuff with than John, right? With his background. Oh, yeah. um, I remember in college once I was doing a, a fight scene just like as practice and I got punched in the face because the person got too close because you're just learning and, you know, in school. And I was like, if there's one person who would never accidentally hit anyone, it's going to be John Cena, right? Because that that's his whole background is like not actually, right? Hurting people, but making it look like he is. So, um, but you'll have to, you'll have to wait and see. Sounds, sounds like you get to do the fun stuff. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, Lilith, you're muted. You're muted, Lilith. You're muted, um, Lilith. I don't know. I unmuted. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, besides, the dogs. The besides dogs. your character, who's your favorite character on the show? Mine's Eagly, so it's okay if you want to say <laughs> Eagly. Um, I love Eagly. Also, Eagly, just like the way that they did Eagly, I was like, this is so, it looks so good. Um, you know, because when we were actually shooting it, you're just looking at nothing and you're like, what is Not this? Not even a tennis ball? No, no, I, I, or like the butterflies that was like, so is this a regular butter? So are we talking a monarch? And, and I was like, what kind of butterfly are we talking here? And so they had made one out of pipe cleaners and they, they would be like, here he is flying around. I was like, oh, okay. I get it. Um, I love Eagly. I would say character wise, I think vigilante is my favorite. Oh, yeah. I like the different take on vigilante for sure. Yeah. Because I'm not familiar with the comics, but I was talking to someone who said that apparently, originally in the comic, he's like a really scary killer, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Freddie does an amazing job. I'm like, I don't know how you are sweet and terrifying at the same time. Like, how do I feel bad for you, but you also just murdered someone, you know? Um, uh, That's social pathology for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's probably my my favorite. Yeah. Okay. Along those lines, how do you feel about Teal, and how does your character feel about Teal? <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> I have never really seriously thought about Teal. I think it is a nice color. My couch is Teal. Um, it can match many things. It is also, um, I suppose, do you like teal is a yes or no question. Um, <laughs> but that scene, it's like, uh, that scene was so funny. Um, <laughs> what are your feelings on teal? Oh, I love teal. So it's, um, I, I mean, to me, that's would just be a, a teal lover. lover. I'm, a, I'm all about teal. My curtains are teal. So that should let you know where I am with teal. Um, it doesn't bother me when something is teal and people say it's green. <laughs> it does bother me. So there's also. Yeah, I can see women that. see color see different because of that hunter gatherer evolution. So I, if it's a guy, I just let it slide. I'm not going to argue with a guy about color. They don't see <laughs> shades of hues. <laughs> But but speaking of the special effects, I was just like the probably the funniest scene towards the end of the episode this week is just like, you know, when your character's like drinking that stuff. And I'm just like, you know, the thing comes out of your mouth. I'm like, so are you just sitting there like this? Like, uh, and then they have to CGI the whole thing in. And that is exactly how it happened. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the way that, you know, when we shot that on the side of the little hill, you know, obviously there's nothing in the sky. So I'm just like looking around and there's big ass like fans blowing in my face. And then it's just James on the God mic being like, and now they're approaching and you are their queen, you know, now scream. And so it's very silly. Like if you think of too much about it, what you're doing, you're like, what is life? This is really weird. Um, and then he would be like, now hold the jar and just, Think of like a big tube coming out of your mouth. Just open your mouth really wide. Okay, wait, now move your head back an inch. Wait, now move it this way, you know, and you're like, well, okay. So yeah, I I didn't really know what it was gonna what it was gonna look like. It was just them guiding me. But yeah, it was really just going, ah, <laughs> and then trying to look convincing. <laughs> 
And what was your favorite moment for your character or well, either one of your characters so far? Was it something in this episode or was it one of the previous episodes? Um, I think one of my favorite scenes is when Fong and uh, Fitzgibbon are in their headquarters and she smiles at him and then says, smiling looks, feels different in every head, you know? Um, I remember when I read that, I was like, this is so creepy. <laughs> um, uh, and so interesting. I think that was one of my favorite acting moments. Generally speaking, I also really love, um, when we're all just marching down the hall. And oh like, yeah. You look badass there. Yeah. Yeah. And all the faces everyone's making, um, just look so silly. Um, that was a lot of fun. And they played the song when we did it. So you could really feel the mood of it, which I thought was smart. Um, there are some, there's one other favorite moment, but it hasn't happened yet. So okay. there's, there's more to come. <laughs> just, just tag us in the tweet when it happens. Okay. I will. Yeah. I'll be like, this is the one guys. <laughs> Uh, I'm very excited to see where this is going. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It is, you know, I, and like I said, I, I'm really, I'm really hopeful in some form or another, your, 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 your character makes it to the end. And I'm hoping this is not the last we've seen, you know, I hope this is not the end of Rico as they say. So <laughs> I'm very excited about where you go, where these characters go and, and where this, entire plot where the butterflies uh wind up at the end of this because it is it's exciting to me yeah it's uh these last i mean it's you know coming close to the end of the season so i would say there are some more twists and turns and if you thought everything was already going down now it's like it's gonna get shit's gonna get real <laughs> so um <laughs> uh yeah it's really fun it was um I think it'll be hopefully for people a, a satisfying ending to the show. I don't think this, I don't it's, Hopefully this isn't too spoilery. Uh, so for these like last two episodes, is it, is it good to be the queen and bark out orders and uh, be, a, is it um, fun to be evilly? Yes, it is too, very fun. <laughs> and uh, I just, you know, it, it's funny when I told my parents that I was going to be playing this part, I remember my dad said, so what are you playing? And I was like, I'm, I'm playing a detective I'm, or I'm like a cop. And I remember he laughed and he was like, you're the last person I would want showing up if I were in trouble. What are you going to do? And I was like, thank you, dad. Um, but but uh, to his point, I think I've never, um, uh, I it was really exciting to get to do something and be so badass like, like this, you know, and to get to have uh, more time to do that is uh is really really fun it's not usually the kind of stuff that i go out for or that i work on so even though i think it's really fun so um it, it was really fun to get to like do that for a little bit instead of it just being like i turned and then it's done so you will see you will see more of her as as a as the boss if joe if uh, joe pesci has taught us anything it's that you don't have to be big to be to be a ba so <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Do we know if there's going to be a season two yet? I, I forgot to check uh, Variety <laughs> this, this week. but As far as I know, I think it's very, very likely. I don't know if it's been fully greenlit yet. I also know that James was teasing online about another possible spinoff. Maybe he would follow another character. I don't know if you guys have hopes yes. as far as who it would be. Do you have hope? <laughs> who? Isn't it, oh, um... well, I'm I'm hoping for Detective Song. I'm just you know, <laughs> I mean, my big hope is that they get the butterfly out. She comes back and she's ready for vengeance. That's <laughs> that's my dream. I don't know if that's going to happen. It's I, I you know, obviously, Charlie. Come on, you know, but uh, <laughs> I'm bad at predictions. I'll be honest with you. Um, well, I'll let James know that this is the consensus out there. So really, yes. if he was planning on getting rid of me, you know, just yes. letting you know, we should give people what they want. So they do, they do want more. <laughs> that is, that is absolutely true. I know I had high hopes that, yeah, if there was a season two, you were coming back. And then la I watched the episode last night and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in these stories, really anything can happen. Yes. There really are no rules. So. Yeah, well, you know, it's 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 like the they 
I mean, I don't, I don't mean to be derogatory, but you know, they did that sort of thing on Agents of Shield. Was like, oh, the strike is in. Them. Well, no, now we got the strike out, so now you're fine. Now it's fine. We said you couldn't get them out, but you know, in this case, we figured out a way. We got you out, so <laughs> you get to live. Everyone else died, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I saw that they said, I don't know if they, it was uh, anything official, but I think uh, season two is, pre- like you said, it's pretty much yeah. almost assured because I, I don't know what the numbers are, but it's a pretty good response. So, yeah. Fans and critics, which is hard these days because the internet is yeah. so divisive. <laughs> right. Well, James Gunn says he's not going back to Marvel. So, you know, that tells you right there that. The, the, he, wow. he, he, he's, he's feeling very positive about where he's at right now. So, I think it's yeah. a good fit. Honestly. Yeah, I well, think honestly, I think so too. You know, I think this is, you know, honestly, I really want to see James Gunn do his ambush bug. Uh, I would love to see that, but that's I'm always pushing for ambush bug. That's just doesn't matter who. <laughs> no, actually, I think he could do ambush bug very well. He has shown his love for Batmite. I know this. The he know he knows the lore. He knows the work. <laughs> He's done the due diligence. Those little slices. Like, yeah. <laughs> When Peacemaker talks about, you know, Superman's poop that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was, this is, I think this might have been my favorite episode this week. I mean, between your scenes and then just like Peacemaker in the classroom, you know. I know. And what he calls every kid, you know. Yes. Very <laughs> Billy Madison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah Eric, what? Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. But no, I mean, it's just a testament to the whole you and the whole cast. Like, I wasn't even sure if I was going to like this series, but between James's writing and I think everyone was like excellently cast. There, everyone, yeah, there, yeah. there's everyone. And I think I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe that James has said. I mean, he told us on set, but I think he's also tweeted this that he pretty much like vets everybody that he casts if he hasn't worked with them before. He'll call someone and be like are they a good person or do they kind of suck? Right. And I think that everyone is a great actor. Yes. But part of what works so well too, is that everybody is just genuinely like a good human being. And, and therefore everyone was having fun while they were doing it. You know Um, I think it makes a big difference. It's, it's like any other job. If you're stuck with a bunch of coworkers, you don't like, you know, then it's going to be, it's going to be rough. So that's all thanks to James making sure that he got a really good group of people together. You guys shoot in Vancouver, right? Yeah, we did, which is beautiful. And are you an LA girl or elsewhere? No, I'm an LA girl. Yeah. Where are you guys based? I'm in Florida. Pennsylvania. <laughs> New York, New Jersey, cradle of civilization. <laughs> um, how amazing that we can be all over and do this together. I'm mm-hmm. always fascinated. Vancouver is beautiful. Uh, did you guys shoot like towards the fall winter or more of a spring we did uh like january until i was done by the end of june yeah but you know it was actually though i everyone that year was like this is strangely a very warm mild yeah 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 winter so it really wasn't bad i think it snowed just like the time it's not like this year um it just snowed like the tiniest bit and that's it so i think overall the show wrapped sometime in july i was done by the end of june but um, overall, sometimes. Also, oh, you did get to see the beautiful season of Vancouver. That's nice. It was gorgeous. I honestly, I'm like, I would love to go back and work. I could see myself living in Vancouver. I absolutely loved it. So, um, and also, weirdly, fun fact I don't know if you know this, but Richmond, which is part of Vancouver, has the most, chi- I'm Chinese, has the most Chinese people outside of China. Yep. Yeah, oh, really? I did not know that. I didn't know either. If you did not know, Canada's other uh, national language, aside from English and French, is Chinese, which is why in Vancouver you will see Chinese written instead of French, oh. because because uh, in Vancouver they said, well, you know what, we don't have a lot of French people here. We will honor uh, the secondary national language, which in this area is not French; it is Chinese. So. I did not I'm know Canadian, that. so I have that. I, I, I have those roots. I know all the Canadian trivia. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the food there is great. Once I knew that, I was like, "Well, fine. I gotta go find. I gotta go find all, all the good places to eat." But yeah, everything in Richmond, yeah, was all in Chinese. It was very cool. Once again, HBO. She would like the work. Uh, yeah, let's let's get let's I, get her on more if things. It's not a spinoff. 
I just say ship her over to the GCPD. We can pretend like it's a prequel. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you know what? She could even be a new character. It's it's fine. They have I'm sure they have Chinese detectives in Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> at least one. <laughs> yes, at least one. No, I was actually saying, you know, you would make a great Joni DC if they do do an ambush book film, but um, that's the continuity cop. But <laughs> I mean, she can play. An, she plays an alien now, for God's sake. She can. Yes. She can easily handle a twin sister. Come on. Although I do have to ask. I do have to ask this now. And and again, everything putting putting any kind of presumptions of what a person looks like aside. What Archie character would you like to play? If you could bring any to life on the big screen. Jughead. Oh. <laughs> Always a good choice. Always that good is choice. a fantastic choice. I would love your Jughead. I would love I, to see your Jughead. I don't know why when I read it, you know... I, I think, you know, girls are always like, oh, you know, Betty and Veronica. But Jughead was always my favorite. And having, like, food all over everything, I was like, that's yeah. that's me, <laughs> is what I used to think. Um, He's uh, the best character. He's the best character, yeah. Well, Ethel, <laughs> and then Jughead. <laughs> Fair enough, yes. <laughs> There's a good argument for that. But yeah, I love Jughead. I think he's really fun. Was well, there any kind of like role or like, you know, like a character whose occupation that you haven't played yet that you'd want to play? Oh, a character's occupation. That's like crazy. a teacher or I mean, you've played cops already. Uh, you know, doctor. I, I guess I've played this, but it was a pilot that didn't end up moving forward. So, so I kind of consider it like I sort of played it, but I personally have a big love for office comedies, weirdly, before, you know, while I was trying to become an actor right outside of school, I, I worked in an office, I hated it. <laughs> and so I think I understand a lot of just like what it feels like to be sitting in a cubicle and feel dead inside. And so <laughs> I think it would be really fun to do some sort of like workplace comedy or and some sort of office comedy at some point that would be really fun for me generally i think i just i love i love comedy which is why i'm i'm so glad that i got to work with james because he really this has everything oh, you know yeah. so you get to do a little bit of everything but i guess maybe some some very mundane boring occupation <laughs> would be fun <laughs> So again, I mean, uh, I'll try to keep this away from spoilers, but it's like now as you at now as the uh, butterfly, do you kind of have some humor, even if it's like you know the straight man to John Cena's character or something? Ooh, do I? I don't think so much, but I will say, I. Hmm, is this a spoiler? Maybe it's just because I was I was acting in it, but I don't feel like they're that bad. That's what I'll say. Oh, oh we've had that conversation, so yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'll leave it at that before I get in trouble. <laughs> no. And then, by the way, I just want to say, Go ahead. I just want to say that the whole line about how smiling is different on every every human face. That's yeah. my favorite. I, I love that scene too. That is just, and it just, you know, it enca encapsulates what it's like to be forced to play a role, uh, which I really enjoyed. And this idea that, you know, you know, humans don't even think about smiling. They just smile, but it's like the entire process of smiling. It's all these muscles on your face doing all these weird contortions. And, you know, if that's not what your species does, it's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I've never thought about it that way as something as like, as like smiling being like, why would people do that? And how do you do that if you don't feel anything behind it? Yes. <laughs> right. Well, it's, it's why they say, you know, it's, 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 you smile with your eyes, not your face, you know, at the same time, it's also that idea that I'm bearing my teeth and this is actually supposed to say, no, we're friends. See my big sharp teeth <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i guess it is contrary right that, that doesn't quite make sense uh, well yeah yeah just my own thoughts i'm sorry <laughs> no no i think that 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 is funny that it's like we're showing our teeth but it's supposed to be a sign of like welcoming but i guess if you're not a human then why would you think it was welcoming so it's very <laughs> confusing yeah 
Humans are weird. Aliens lock the, their car windows when they roll by Earth. We all know this. <laughs> I That is also my theory. I am pretty sure when people are like, oh, aliens are coming to Earth. I'm like, you kidding me? They've been here and they were like, bye. We'll let you guys just, you know, ruin yourselves and we'll just hang out here and eat popcorn, you know? <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Okay. I keep trying to lay the spoiler trap for you. Like, do any of your friends and family try to get spoilers out of you? Like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, what's going to happen in the last two episodes? What's going to happen in the last two episodes, especially after this week? Um, my, my, my immediately family ki kind of knows because I had, you know, told, um, uh, my parents about it. Um, uh, but funnily enough, most of my friends who are watching it are like, oh, this was great. What's going to happen? Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, cause I'm like, well, do you, and they're like, no, wait, I'm just going to ask you questions, but just don't say anything. I'm like, okay. <laughs> because I do think it's so fun to just figure it out, especially this day and age. Like yeah. if you don't want spoilers, if you're not watching it at like 1201 on Wednesday night, you have to like actively not yeah. look at your phone or look at anything or else it's immediately going to get spoiled. Oh, yeah, I'll be at work at, like, 9 a.m. And I'm looking, look, look, I'm like, man, wow, there's spoilers already. Yeah, and your phone's listening to you, so it's going to send you stuff, right, yeah. about the show. So mm -hmm. it's even harder. Anyway. Yeah, little, little baby AIs. They don't know any better. They're just, you like this. Here, here's these things you like. It's like, no, not yet, though. I don't want them now. Right. <laughs> okay. So you stay up till 12.01. You watch it, and you avoid the spoilers. The episodes fly by. Just absolutely, they do. For you guys, right, East Coast, that's way later. So it's it's 12.01 Pacific time. So I yeah. think three is hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like I said, I was scrolling through your Twitter looking for, you know, just doing my homework. Okay, you have to answer to me. Uh, what was in your trailer? <laughs> you said there's like weird stuff in your trailer. You're like, you never know what's in my trailer because you guys were like looking out the door and stuff. Oh, 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 oh. That, um, who posted? I think that was, I think the Peacemaker handle had posted that. I think that actually was, it wasn't actually his trailer. It was in the set. Um, it was Evan and Amber's apartment, actually. Oh. I think that's where that was. Um, uh, but it kind of looks like, yeah, like we're peeking in somewhere. But there were, you know, we weren't supposed to actually like take photos on set. But the uh, the set photographer, like Lachlan and I, were just kind of messing around, and she was like, "Okay, real quick, I'm gonna take a picture." So she took a couple of pictures of us, and then she was like, "But don't post it until the show's running, or else I'm gonna get in trouble." Um, so we very purposefully tried to make it not so clear, but I think that was in um, Evan and Amber's uh, apartment and it was after they had messed it through or was it Evan and Amber's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. Um, so it was just us goofing around. <laughs> so did you get to keep anything like the badge or anything? No, I don't think I got to keep anything. I did at some point. Uh, Peacemaker had so many fun things in his trailer, um, little tchotchkes and whatever, um, uh, that I, <laughs> that I would have loved to keep, but no, I didn't end up keeping anything. I think that for me, I usually don't ask to keep anything physical because this sounds so corny, but the best stuff is in here, you know, like it really is like the experience of it and the relationships and the feeling of it that like nothing physical is going to top that, you know? Um, that sounded so corny. We can move on. No, from that. that's beautiful. Oh, that's, that's, that just shows how, like, evolved of a person you are. You know, it's, <laughs> I don't need the thing. I already did the thing. You know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like in the doors when they say, you'll never do the Ed Sullivan show again. And it says, hey. We just did the Ed, Ed Sullivan show. You know, it's it, it's the idea that it doesn't matter if it's gone. It was done. And I experienced it. Yeah. And like when you think about like moments in your life where something really big happened, whether it was joyous or not, it's like half the time I can't even remember exactly what happened. I just remember how I feel, you know, or sometimes I look at photos and I'm like, I don't know where this is, you know? So it doesn't matter that I took the photo. I think what matters more is like, I just want to enjoy it. And then I will remember that feeling for much longer than I'll remember what was actually there and what it looked like, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I wanted a story where HBO sent you a t-shirt or James sent you a t-shirt that says I survived Robert Patrick. <laughs> I would love that shirt. That would be very fun. Um, uh, I don't know if such shirt exists, but my, my very sweet uh, boyfriend did make me a cake that I had posted on Instagram. That said, Oh, is that the one that looked like the piece? Yeah. 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 That just said, uh, like, I think it just said like, fuck, it's Annie Chang or whatever with my head on it and like a peacemaker <laughs> thing. And I was like, oh my God, this is so <laughs> hilarious and silly. Um, it's probably like the best thing I've, I've ever gotten. So. Is yeah. your boyfriend a baker? No, no, no. He, he, um, the cake is from a very well-known, um, bakery called Baskin Robbins. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> it's an ice cream. I've heard of them. They're nice. Excellent work. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I, it, he did have to spend a good amount of time finding some photo of me and like photoshopping it in. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. That's yeah, very sweet. Very, that's sweet. very, very sweet. I'm sure the cake was delicious. <laughs> it was. Uh, what was it? Was it vanilla? Was it mint chip? Um, so if you've ever gotten, I take my ice cream cakes very seriously, by the way. <laughs> Um, I'm sure you do. That's why I'm asking. I do. Because like, if you go to Ben and Jerry's, you can also get an ice cream cake, but it's just ice cream. There's no actual cake. It's just ice cream in the shape of a cake, which I'm kind of like, then why don't you just have ice cream? Baskin Robbins will do actually a layer of actual cake. So it was chocolate cake. And then I think it was cookies and cream ice cream. And then the frosting or whatever. That's actually ice cream cake. Ice cream cake is not just ice cream in the shape of a cake. I agree, 1,000%. And to be honest with you, Carvel, they put little, like, cake bits on it. I don't think it's as good. Oh. See, that's me. I don't think it's as good. The strawberry crunch is amazing from Carvel. What are you talking about? Okay, you see, I grew up in the Midwest, not on the one of the coasts where I guess Carvel is. Every week, Annie. Every week. (laughs) These two. You know. We're like oil and vinegar. We don't mix. We're like brothers. I like an honest-to-goodness cake. Carvel, I like, look, I, I appreciate a Carvel cake. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> but the little, the little crunchy cake bits on it, it's like, uh, it, it's like, I know what you're going for, but it's not a cake. It's, it's, it's like, a, it's like, a, it's like basically crumbled cookies. It's cookies. It's a cookie. It's an ice cream cookie is what it is. And with the ice cream on, on the top end, and you know, it's not a, it's not an ice cream cake like you get at Baskin Robbins. That's Ooh, speaking of food, you did do you did work with the hot pocket king himself, Jim Gaffigan, one time. And I love Jim Gaffigan. He's my favorite um male shaped potato, as he likes to say. How was that? Or do you remember? I know that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Uh I, I do remember it because I remembered, first of all, my introduction to Jim Gaffigan was also it, where he talked about hot pockets. Yeah. I remember being in college and we would all just repeat that joke like forever, you know? Um, and so I was a little nervous cause I love Jimmy Gaffigan. And I was like, Oh, you know, whenever you're working with someone that you really love and respect, you always feel so much more nervous, you know, cause you have hopes of, of not seeming like an idiot. And so, uh, he was very lovely. His wife was also there who is very smart and lovely. Um, uh, he was so nice, just like so normal and nice. Um, I've been very lucky that I think that there are very few people that I've ever worked with that were weird or strange or 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 not kind. Um, but he was great. He's so funny. Um, he would come up with jokes just like on the fly and try different things. And yeah, he was great. That's good to hear. I, I love him. And it's so good to hear. Yeah, he's so funny. And I think he's like also just a good person, which is great. That's always good to hear, you know. I know. Although I actually believe most people are good people, but that somehow really tricky people fall up the food chain somehow. I don't know how that happens, but. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's a positive way to look at it. That's that's my opinion. I don't know. Yeah. I like like all the people I work with. Well, it'd be very weird if you, I was going to say, if you're talking about Lilith and Phil, it'd be very awkward if you just <laughs> right now that you don't, didn't like them. <laughs> this isn't our, this isn't our work. This is our fully missing. <laughs> oh, well, I think that you guys are very, very good at it. So maybe it should oh. be your oh, work. Thank you. We All right. Now, we did it, now, I, now I get to be here. You, you, you people hear that? Uh, someone hire us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. I don't know. I think interviewing is hard. You know, I've been doing 
uh, some of them. And, and it, it, you can really tell when it's easy. It just feels like you're like talking and hanging out with people. That's an art to like come up with stuff and feel the flow of it. I don't think I could ever do it. I'm always the weird person at the party that like doesn't know what to say after I say hi. And then I just stand there awkwardly and there are weird silences and then I just walk away. That's me. So to do what you guys are doing, I think is very hard and, and it takes, it takes talent. So yeah, this is very fun and, and you guys are easy to hang with. Oh, that's cool. You. Cause you know, you may not realize this, but you've been doing all the work. Exactly. You, you, like when you count the words said, you've done all of it. And we've mostly been <laughs> just sitting here listening like a rapt audience, which as an actress and as an actor is what you want us to do. You know, is we're a true? rapt audience and you are project, you are telling us the tale. And it has been beautiful. And nobody has fallen asleep. When I used to work in theater, uh, the goal was always, especially for a matinee where a lot of the, the older audience would attend, we were like, okay, the only goal is nobody snores, okay? <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions or should we let this uh, young lady go? Yeah, yes. definitely. She's been a pleasure. You've been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, guys. Powerful. But you know what you have to do, Phil. You have to get the drop. Oh yes, Lil fit, Lil, Lil's cracking the whip again. Uh, can, can we get a drop of you for the podcast? Just you know, this is Annie Chang, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Yeah, sure. Do I just say it whenever? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, great. This is Annie Chang, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> Thanks, guys, for having me. I hope you have a really oh, nice Friday night. Thank yeah, you. We enjoyed it. And before and before Thanks. you go, is there anything you want to promote besides uh, the rest of Peacemaker? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, uh, the week after Peacemaker finishes. I'm actually in something else that's going to premiere on February 27th. It's called Super Pumped. I don't know if you've seen any trailers for it. It's um, it's done by the same team that did Billions, which was on Showtime. Super Pumped is also going to be on Showtime, and it's based on a book that talks about the rise and the fall of Uber and of Travis Kalanick, who was one of the founders. Um, yeah, I have seen that. I have seen. I've, I've seen the ads is for that. that yes, the one with Uma Thurman. Yeah, Uma Thurman, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's a crazy cast. Kyle Chandler, um, I think Hank Azaria and Fred Armisen. Like it's it's just like like the craziest group of people and it's also based on very true events so it's a it's something i never knew about and so it's a wild story and almost all of us are playing people that actually exist currently so um so it's cool so check it out it's gonna be on showtime february 27th. I love showtime. yeah is that a movie or is that a series it's a series seven episodes series. So seven episodes it. okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh Looking man! So, watching it. so really, thank you for your time because it seems like you you never stop working. <laughs> uh, knock on wood. <laughs> um, I hope it keeps going. Yeah, um, but no, this was this was really fun. Thank you for asking me. Okay. Oh hey, you're you're welcome back anytime. Uh, yeah, after Super Pump Rap, we'd love to chat you up about that too. <laughs> there you go. Sounds good. All, All right. right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 She was so nice. She was. I I, I love when she was that. so pleasant. She was. She didn't call me a dumbass one time. <laughs> oh, you love is, that dumbass comment. You love. You cherish that comment. I, <laughs> Five I years do ago. so much. I do so much. Um, but uh, no, she was not, and she really. I think she enjoyed herself. So that's that's that to me tells us we did our job. And and. I mean, it's so nice to hear that, you know, these people that you see on, you know, show, these shows and stuff are so nice. And at least, at least she is. I choke out John Cena. I can't wait. I'll have I know. I can't wait for that. Either. My, my yeah. I mean, honestly, how you do that without wire work? I, it's like, no, you, <laughs> you, you want to really sell that. You're going to have to do wire work with poor John. You know, it's like, no, we need to put it in his belt loop, lift him up. So they got that two inches off the ground. Well, I was gonna say, I wonder if that's what they're doing. And like, she he starts on the ground, then they lift him up with the wire. Like she's lifting him up, by, you know, with one arm and stuff. Yeah, it's like you know, it's. I can't wait for that. Yeah, I heard him beat his ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm sure she will. It'll be wonderful. Oh yeah. Um, she, she's I, I just, I just hope, I, I hope she gets to it. Or like I said, or she comes back. I mean, honestly, I would love to see her. Like I said, we can have 
some other character in she could be Bullock in uh in Gotham PD. She, 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 she could be Bullock's daughter. Bullock. There we go. Bullock had a daughter and she's got the trench coat and she's just like ah well, you know she has she has a thing for trench coats now. That's that's tied to her character. There we go. Oh, she's a trench there we go. Character. Just get her a trench coat. She can be Susan Bullock. Bullock's daughter. Bullock. Come on, come on. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I wasn't familiar. I wasn't familiar with her before this series. I am now an Annie Chang fan. Yes. Damn it! I'm gonna have to get Showtime now. <laughs> you don't have Showtime. Oh, no, I see, you, get, you get uh, you get download back as Commissioner Bullock in Gotham PD, and you have it as the whole story is as him and his his daughter coming up the ranks. That would work. I think I think that works. I think that works. We just need a pitch Tell something. HBO to scrap HBO everything works. they did before this. That's their new show. Just make it happen. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I don't care. As long as it can be a completely new character. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So should we get out of here? Yeah, I know. I guess so. A whole other show to do. No one, no one, no one's here to listen to why she's going. (laughs) We're done now. Thank you. So I guess we'll be back next week to talk uh, new comics of that week. You're gonna bring anything that was important over. You can always bring it over, Lilith. I do that all the time. Exactly. It gets okay. I don't, you All know, right, I don't yeah. like to <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yes, send us your thoughts. How great was Annie Chang? Uh, hey, anybody else Are on you TV? Watching wanted... Peacemaker? How much do you love that intro? If anybody else from the show or any of the any other show wants to talk to us, email us capes and lunatics Come at on, <laughs> Ellen Tudak. Reach out to us. That's what I said. The casting's good. I would talk to anybody on that show. They are good. Oh, well, Alan Turek's not in this one. No, 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 but yeah. All right, so yeah. Patrick, I'm just going to put that in the atmosphere. <laughs> I know, I was going to you know how much you scared her? All right, so yes, kids, email us. <laughs> Method. All right, kids, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And you can follow Capes and Lunatics on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, find links to all the various social medias for all the shows. Uh, links to uh, the YouTube channel. You can watch this episode. There's a video for it. We got a fa- we talked to a famous person. Uh, but most importantly, if you can, please subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, once again, we're not a famous actor. Yes, three to five dollars little hellfire. I know. Get you the uh, exclusive content. The early. Uh, creator interviews then uh dg chai chester every month and chai only chester on patreon chats. what chai oh. chester chats. that's right or this and uh, only on patreon the superhero movie brackets uh find find out what's going to be the worst superhero movie so find everything at linktree l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash capes and lunatics come on right. puma man <laughs> <laughs> all right lilith where can people find you if you guys want to hang out with me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire. You can find me on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire 69. And of course, on the TikTok, making the spicy comments at Lilith Hellfire 69. Duh. Mm-hmm. Shut up and just lay there. All right, Charlie Esser. Well, if you'd like to write to me in the old-fashioned email with where mothers and fathers once did do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog. All one word at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter as I live tweet Naomi. Uh, what's that? Tuesday nights at nine? That's <laughs> Charlie Esser. The C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For what? For quality. Bing. Thank you, Maz. <laughs> All right, so yes, again, any famous people who want to talk to us. Nice. Get a hold of us. All right, yes, but for another week, we have been New York Capes. I'm Passant. Lunatics. Yay. Bill, wake up. Drink some more Long Island iced tea. Just wake up. Who, me? <laughs> Remember, kids, from now on, we have to uh, root for the butterfly, the butterfly queen. I was already rooting for them. I, I cool. Yeah, you. You're always rude for evil. It's kind of the brand. Wait.
boy, how much beer did he drink? He's already out. He did his part. <laughs> oh, bro, it's so funny. Thank you, Annie Chang. Good night. To you.